uh, looking forward here as that's qualified you for the uh, Super League Championship. So congratulations for that. And uh, let's take a look, though, at our last chance qualifier graphic here. And you can get a look here. Last chance qualifiers for the Super League Championship. We see Gerard, Owen, Tom, and then a bunch of TBDs. Now those TBDs, and I think that should be you. But uh, anyway, the the right for our TBDs are going to be voted on by you, the 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 fan of, of the Super League fan. There's going to be a list of players that uh, were involved in the Super League earlier. You know, maybe in the vintage or the standard, and they didn't quite make the cut here. But you're going to get a chance to. Uh, to vote to see who's there, and uh, yeah, you know a lot of specifically. Like, am I the sole vote, or are you talking to the audience? I'm talking to the audience. Oh, okay. Well, you, you do get a vote, I suppose. I, I don't know if, if you're allowed to vote on it, but you might be able to. But yeah, I think that should be you instead of Lee over there, right? That he's in the LCQ. Thank I, you, Randy. Yeah. I, so I'm I made it into the. So you've actually skipped this whole process, right? Oh, right. Right. Yeah. And so that means that that Lee as a close finisher, right? And you'll see that a lot from these these players where uh, they're the ones who are in, but you do get to vote on those other seats and uh, two of the seats, which is pretty cool. Um, let's take a look at our bracket here to get things updated. Uh, Sean McLaren advances. Sean, once again, congratulations on that, and you have moved on. That brings us, though, to our next match. We're going to be watching Patrick Dickmon, who I just had in the booth with me here, Sean, and he's playing against Cedric Phillips to move on to the next round. Now, both of these guys are already qualified for the uh, for the championship, so they don't have quite as much weight as far as that goes on their shoulders. But you know, Patrick said, "I want to be the the first person to win Modern Super League," and uh, I, I could tell that it meant quite a bit to him. I went over the prizes as well. There's uh, for first place here. We're going to be giving away a foil set of Modern Masters 2015 on Magic Online. Uh, second place is going to get a regular set as well, and third is going to get that Super League Championship invite as well as the other two. So, you know, quite a bit on the line here. But, yeah, why don't we take a look at deck lists as we prepare for, for our next matchup here, Sean? Because I really want to get your take on how this matchup is going to go. We did have a chance to talk a little bit with Patrick about what he thought. But uh, here's Tarmo Twin. This is kind of the deck that Patrick, you know, built his modern resume on when he first crashed onto the scene. And, uh, and he's still running it. And uh, this deck looks really, really good. Uh, wh what do you make of Tarmo Twin here? Yeah, I mean it's it's just a sweet deck. He he plays it excellent. It's a it's a hard deck to play. A lot of uh, a lot of uh, one ups and and multiple cards. Lots of tricky cards like Remand and Snapcaster Mage. And then there's a combo. You have to uh, juggle that as well. So not not uh, an easy deck to play. But when you know how to play it, it it really pays off. Powerful. Yeah, and I mean, it must be said that Patrick Dickmon has to be the best Tarmor Twin player in the whole world, right? I, yeah, I mean, not a lot of people play the deck, but <laughs> right, he, he he definitely is. I mean. So, yeah, like you were saying, I mean, if, if you can play it well, well, he can definitely play it well. Let's take a look at his opponent, though, Cedric Phillips. You, of course, know Cedric from his coverage gig over at, uh, at SCG Live. and uh, but, but Cedric's a player. You know, Cedric's got a PT Top 8 under his belt. Now, it was a little while ago because he's been focusing more on the content end of things. But, uh, you know, when he needs to, uh, to shuffle up the cards, he certainly knows what he's doing. And uh, as he would say, he likes to go upstairs. And uh, he's brought this the zoo list it's it's a it's got heavy burn elements to it as well and uh, this thing is looking to get you dead and get you dead quickly how is that going to play out against the Tarma twin matchup uh, I mean first instinct is that I like the zoo deck for this matchup the the remands are gonna be pretty poor the cryptic commands are gonna be slow and uh, Patrick's deck is is not exactly friendly to him mana base wise I would say. So he he's going to be struggling to not take damage and get all his all his colors going, and uh, Cedric also has disruption, a little bit of disruption for the uh, the combo, but and uh, I. A, de a Deceiver Exarch into Splinter Twin could just end the game. I mean, Yeah, he always has that threat sitting there that Cedric has to respect. All right, it seems that the players are ready. Let's head down to the match here where we're going to decide who gets to continue on in the modern Super League. Will it be Patrick Dickmon with his signature Tomer Twin deck or Cedric Phillips looking to burn out his opponent with Zoo? 
What do these opening hands look like to you, Sean? I see that Cedric has a two lander and a bunch of spells beyond that. Uh, yeah, both these hands uh, look good right off the bat. I mean, three lands for Patrick, two lands for Cedric. That's that's what Cedric wants. He has two creatures as well to apply pressure. I'm not sure what he's supposed to do, Goblin Guide or Wild in the Cattle. That's a tough, tough one, but that's I'm a sure good he choice knows. to have. Yeah. <laughs> um, on the other side of the table, you know, one of the things that Patrick brought up when I had him on the air here just a few minutes ago was the die roll, right? Uh, he said, look, it, the die roll is very important in this matchup. Uh, there's no two ways around it, and it looks as though Cedric has won the die roll here. Yeah, that's obviously huge. The, the creatures are going to be out before uh, Patrick can really do anything to the board with this hand. I am curious I mean, to see if Cedric plays the uh, the Goblin Guide or the uh, or the Nakatl first. That that is uh, kind of the first thing I'm looking at, and it looks like Patrick's decided to mulligan that hand. Wow, that's that's an aggressive mulligan, and I mean, I like the style. Go search for a bolt, or maybe the combo, or something that can can win yeah. you the game. This hand looks pretty good, though. He he gets to start off with the Tarmogoyf, and then he can pass a turn with Browning Crisis and Remand available as well. Um, but we had our, our question answered, Sean. It was Wild Nakatl to start things off for Phillips. Yep. That means he gets to attack for five next turn. Ouch. Yeah, that, that's a lot. <laughs> and it, I mean, Cedric's already running away with the game. Patrick's just going to be on the back foot this entire game. This whole time. Yeah, that Cryptic Command off the top is not what Dickmon wants to see. And yep. here he's going to go get... Looks like a Sacred Foundry, and there it is. Crunch for five. He did get a land off of it, it looks like. Well, there's always that. There's <laughs> always that. <laughs> you get to but die with a bunch of lands in your hand. I know yeah. that feeling all too well. <laughs> yeah, I've definitely been on the bad end of that in modern myself. Now, uh, you also mentioned this as a potential problem for Dickmon, is that, yeah, he's already going to be taking some damage off of his lands here. Uh, if he wants to play a Tarmogoyf, he's going to have to crack that Misty Rainforest. Yeah, and the Tarmogoy is only going to be a 1-2 as well. So yep. <laughs> that's another problem. And, and like, if he wants to leave up Remand, uh, it's not going to counter anything unless uh, Cedric draws another creature, which he happened to do. But that's but even then. Yep. <laughs> doesn't even take care of it. And and on top of it, Cedric just gets the option of not even playing it if he wants. He's got a bunch of instant speed uh, burn spells in his hand that he can just say, okay, you want to waste your turn? Go. Uh, it does yeah. look like he's going to run out the guide here, though. Yeah, I think you just run it out. You you don't really care if he draws a card off of Raman that much. No. You, you can just, just replay the... the yeah, you just replay the guide anyway, right? Yep. All right, there it is, Remand. And, uh, I mean, the reason, you know, why Patrick does this is he's setting up a bigger Tarmogoyf next turn or the ability to play the uh, the bounding crisis, but yeah, the damage is just flowing now here for Phillips as uh, Cedric is about to hit uh, Patrick for half of his remaining life total with this attack. Uh, yeah, and I don't know what what could possibly get Patrick out of this situation, but there's not much. He's dead. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't want to call it too early here because Patrick certainly knows how to get around it. I mean, bounding crisis can can lock down a Nicotle and you know, uh, p potentially block a goblin guide or something. But, I mean, he's at seven life. Just look at S Cedric's hand. This is ignoring the board, right? He's got six damage with the bolt and the helix, seven with with the uh, searing blaze. It's just like... Yeah, Deceiver, Exarch, into Splinter Twin won't do it. Like, bol a bunch of bolts won't do it because he'll just die to the burn. Or I guess if you do... Three bolts off the top and had the mana to cast them. <laughs> Maybe he would. <laughs> he could be at one. Yeah. And then just never play a creature again. Yep. And it looks like it was Dismember. Yeah. It, Dickmon's uh, draw steps have been pretty annoying for him. Uh, finding the Cryptic Command and the Dismember in this matchup is just misery. Yeah. This, this member's especially frustrating. I mean, Dismember isn't even that bad if he has it on turn one because, 
like if it if it had killed the wild and the cattle, it would have been a, a net positive in life. But at this point, he just can't cast it. No, he just can't even cast it. There's Tarmogoyf. He's left up a spell pierce here as well. But it's not going to get the job done. It looks like Cedric's deciding if he wants to crack this Mesa. You know, he, he could fire off a lightning bolt here to be slightly more mana efficient, but he does give up the opportunity to have landfall potentially for his uh, Searing Blaze. So I, I think he'll just take a, you know, just yeah. take his turn here. Yeah. Any, just, any, any line he takes, checkmates uh, yep. Patrick here, as long as he casts his two spells and attacks, which yeah. is what the deck does. <laughs> Yeah, a really great draw here for Cedric Phillips. Just dumps his hand, piles on the damage exactly like he drew it up. A bunch of creatures as well as the burn spells to back it up. And, you know, from here it actually looks like he's going to get to kind of still had all these, you know, six damage or something in his hand as well. Is all right. Very ballsy. <laughs> Patrick Dingfine just fires off the dismember, but of course. On his own Tarmogoy, no less, <laughs> on his for, own for value. He's going out on his own terms. I respect that. All right, let's see how these players sideboard. Uh, Sean, we've got a pretty cool graphic here, as you can see. We actually get to watch them sideboard. We got to watch you uh, do that as well. So uh, a little bit less guessing for us. We get to just sort of figure out. Let's see uh, what players are bringing in and, and what they're doing here. Uh, looks like uh, Cedric's going for the path to exiles. Uh, Cedric, I don't think Cedric has got too much use out of his sideboard this tournament. Uh, a lot of the cards are for specific matchups, and a lot nobody like brought affinity or anything like that. And and the zoo deck really has a sort of laser focused sideboard. It just wants to do its thing of cast creatures and burn, and there there isn't too much that changes that. But the paths are good for uh, stopping the combo. And, and that's really what he's worried about, is just losing to the combo at some point. That makes sense, yeah. Patrick, on the other hand, is going to get a lot of nice upgrades. Like, he gets to get rid of all the remands. Gets to, gets to bring in interaction, essentially. He, get, he has access to, like, uh, Spell Skype, which might be good. The Thrag Tusks, which are excellent. Yeah, he brought those in. He's brought in a pyroclasm already as well. Uh, yeah, and uh, I would imagine he brings in the spell skate and the pyroclasms as well, but he, he might be thinking otherwise. It, it is kind of like interesting, he, yeah, how that plays out because, you know, if you look at Cedric's sideboard, you see Destructive Revelry right there front and center, and I think he's got four of them. Is that what I'm seeing? At any rate, he, he certainly has the ability to destroy artifacts for value uh, if he wants to. Yeah, but I, I don't think you just bring it in for a spell skite. That's, I don't think that's, so either. Yeah, I just I'm curious why would Patrick not bring in spell skite in this match? It's interesting. He still has the cryptics in as well. It looks like, which is confusing to me. I mean, cryptic is not generally a card you think of as as good against zoo. It's four mana, triple blue. So, I I would I would want the pyroclasms in the spell skite over the cryptics. I think. Yeah, that makes sense to me. He didn't do it though. He 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 did in fact leave the spell skite in the board. He, uh -oh. he kept in the cryptic. So let's see what uh, Patrick Dickmon has has lined up here. He did say that he had a chance to test this matchup against a friend of his. And oh. interestingly, he's, while he's, this he's got a plan at least. It's a it's a bold move, Cotton. Let's see how it plays out. Yeah, and and this is interesting that the opening hand for Dickmon that you see at the top is actually one that he described on the air. Uh, he he didn't leave leave it with uh, five lands, but he did say, "Look, Tarmogoyf's really important. If I go land Serum Vision's Tarmogoyf, then he's going to have a hard time." He, he called it a brick wall. He says the Tarmogoyf, there's just no easy answer to it at that point. And uh, he actually has that exact hand here. It's just that it's also surrounded by five lands, so he is going to need to find some action from the visions. Right, uh, but that's what visions does, right? It it's it finds action with the totally. Scrags. And uh, uh, in the meantime, Cedric has kept a six card hand here. He did have to mulligan. How does his hand look to you? Cedric's hand looks good, but it does it doesn't have path to exile for Tarmogoyf. So that Tarmogoyf is potentially looking to be a brick wall, but it it should only be a two three for uh, unless uh, an instant or something hits the graveyard all right well unfortunately for patrick he found yet another land off of his uh, serum visions i didn't see if he bottomed or topped but uh well he's found something he's found a power clasm 
pyroclasm and uh could do that now it looks like he's going to just line up a termagoyf here it, it does mean that the wild nakatl is going to be out of range of pyroclasm uh as a result though which is really awkward but there are two edelons and if if the pyroclasm can pick up one or two of those that's that's a good use for it and there is Eidolon number one and another land. So getting getting a little uh, hot under the color here for, for Patrick Dickman, who finds himself down a game to Cedric Phillips here. Yeah, that that's like being left with four lands in hand is is not a winning winning strategy here. Where's his cryptic but command? <laughs> his his Tarmogoyf is gonna get very large here since the Eidolon's an enchantment and a creature. So there's the brick five. wall. So brick wall acquired. He's got a four five. And here's Eidolon number two as well as a land for Phillips. But that's his whole turn and no attack as well. So it looks like Patrick has bought himself some amount of time here. He found, finds a bounding crisis off the top as well. And we could have a game here. We, we could have a really interesting game. I'm, I hope both players get Eidolon locked. <laughs> <laughs> and a bold attack here from Patrick he knows he's got that bounding crisis that he can bring in at any time to uh, produce two big blockers if uh, Cedric decides he wants to try to rumble with his creatures here yeah that, that might be what he's setting up here uh, one thing that happens too, Sean, is is that you know the zoo deck does take a lot of damage off of its mana base, and that attack from the Tarmogoyf knocks Cedric down to twelve. Yeah, it. I mean, it, it's it's going to be a race for the the taste here for the finish line. And you mentioned it. You know these Eidolons. I, I mean, does Cedric have any spells that don't trigger the Eidolons? I don't believe so. <laughs> I don't think so either. Now, does Patrick let it resolve? He does. Does not play the Krasis. He's going to... Oh, wow. Cedric's, uh, that, Cedric's playing around the, uh, the uh, untap, the Tarmogoyf play. Yeah. He's playing around it, but he's now down to 10. <laughs> and Patrick's the one with the 4-5 on the board, and he can even add a 3-3 three, three at instant speed if he wants, if he wants to pay 4 life for it. This is getting yeah. interesting. I it feels like Dickmon's ahead though, uh, even despite the two uh, Eidolons. Uh Yeah, I mean, he if he if he draws Splinter Twin, that uh, that's game. If he plays out the uh, Crisis and those Cryptic commands are actually looking really really good right now, <laughs> so <laughs> he's got that going for him too. Now, he's drawn a Serum Visions, which is the exact type of card that you'd normally want to see in this situation after you've, you know, flooded out a little bit and uh, and just really need action. But those Eidolons are scary. I mean, casting a Serum Visions, the cost of four life is a big deal. Yeah, they, they, the cantrips are the exact cards you don't want to see against Eidolons. Yeah. But, it, I mean, it, it it's still a question of whether he plays it or not because he, he he wants the cards really bad and he does have a bit of life to work with. Well, he's decided not to play it, at least in his first main. He did not attack with Tarmogoyf. Right. And and Cedric's in, in kind of a kind of an awkward spot because he just, like, Very every, every burn spell he plays does more damage to him and he's at a lower life total. <laughs> yeah. Did you get a sense for how many lightning bolts Patrick Dickmon plays in his list as well? Uh, I, I thought it was four. I mean, it's lightning bolt. I, I would assume. I just, I just couldn't remember. And uh, I mean, that's also something that Cedric is going to have to keep in mind: is that if he if he lets his life total fall too low, then he could just get bolted. And yeah, there's a lot of triggers that happen, but it could be one of those things where the first person to blink, <laughs> you know, loses. Yeah. Because it's weird with the triggers from from Eidolon, because you know you, you go to bolt your opponent, and you're the one that takes four damage first. Yeah, Patrick has four lightning bolts, and I imagine they're all in. Yeah, and, and they should all be in there. So Cedric is is going to have to really consider that. Uh oh, here we go. He's he's offering up the Eidolons as sacrifices. He says, 
I, I want to cast these burn spells now. <laughs> And Patrick has to decide if he's going to accept the offer or not here. Yeah. I mean, I, th I think he has to block. He otherwise, just has to block, right? Like, he, I th he's probably considering playing up the uh, crisis. And getting both of them? Yeah. I mean, that, that would free up a lot for Cedric, and, and it would mean that, you know, he, he, he would have what eight damage at the ready right now from the two boros charms uh yes cedric hmm, he would actually would have, have enough, lethal yeah he would have enough burn over two turns to win the game yeah he could end step hit him for eight and then untap and atarkas command him and uh, remember patrick will be at 10 now after making this play now the, the interesting thing though is, is of course is that this bounding crisis is going to gobble up a couple, and, and, and the Tarmogoyf are going to gobble up both of these, and, and that does leave a nice attack here for for uh, for Patrick as well. And he gets to uh, tap down the Wild and the Cattle, which actually makes Lightning Bolt a win condition at this point. He can, right. He can just attack for lethal if he has a little bit more burn. So he's going to get uh, at, at least two draws at it with certain visions as well, since... Oof. Islands are good. So it's going to be a sweat. Oh, this is going to be a good sweat here. <laughs> so block, block. No response from Phillips, who I think he isn't super thrilled with his position here, but getting those Eidolons off the table is pretty important given his hand. And they did work. I mean, that's a lot of damage they did to, to Dickman. I think they, they were responsible for six damage. I think Cedric's uh, considering a Tarkus command to kill the Krasis now, which... Ah, but he would uh, drop down to five yeah, in that I scenario? Yeah, I think that would make the Tarmogoyf be lethal if he casts a Tarkus command. It, yeah, there's no instance in the yard yet, right? Five power, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're right. It, it would be a, a five, six. He could actually give double strike to the second idol line. And, and kill the Tarmogoyf? <laughs> he could have. That would have been kind of interesting. But that's... Or to kill the Krasis, right? Very risky. Like. Yeah. All right, so both Eidolons down. And he passes the turn back. Close Are there board. basic lands in Cedric Phillips' deck? Uh, I believe there's at least a mountain. Okay. Because uh, that was a ghost quarter off the top for, for Patrick. <laughs> Who's going to drop down the nine here? It's going to thin with a, a land here. He could have also thinned with a ghost quarter if he really if, wanted. If he was dedicated to the thinning out plan. <laughs> yeah, if he didn't want to take the damage. And here's Serum Visions. He found a lightning bolt off the top with it. Yeah, and that appears to be lethal. Wow. <laughs> Oh man! Attacks for seven and has the lightning bolt in hand. Holy smokes! Burn that's how the, you do it. Burn out the burn player. That's it. That's it. Oh man! Yeah, that looks like a, he's going to give him a taste game. of his own medicine here. Oh geez, just and found Cedric's it. Just one burn away, one point away here. He needs only to untap. He has him at one, but instead, Patrick Dickmon's going to even things up at one game apiece with that crucial lightning bolt top deck. Wow, what a game! Yep, the the shuffle off the misty rainforest was kind to him. Yeah, he he used that you know point oh three percent or whatever and uh, and found the win. Wow, inc incredible stuff there! And uh, that means that we get to watch another game between oh, yeah. these two players. And uh, I got to say, I'm pretty excited, especially after the way the one that that, that one panned out. Yep, uh, and I mean Cedric's on the play, so it's going to be tough for Patrick. Yeah, we saw what happened in the first game, and you know, if Cedric had been on the play that game, it looks like he would have won as well. It it, it really does come down to uh, the die roll sometimes in these situations. One thing that Patrick also brought up, though, I wanted to get your thoughts on it, Sean. Where he did say that the zoo deck 
will somewhat often just die to itself. And and I think he meant, you know, the mana base and, and trying to make everything click as far as that goes, getting the draw to line up. Um, is that, in, in your experience, does, does the deck have consistency issues like that? Well, yeah, I mean, uh, usually all in burn decks of that nature do. They, they might not have a hand with a creature in it. They might have a one lander and never draw another land. They might mulligan into oblivion because they have a lower land count like last game cedric actually mulliganed and that that played a big part in that game as well yeah Being for sure card. okay so we'll, we'll that's something that we'll have to keep an eye on here as well as we move into the critical game three here we go come on three three eidolons this game all right, now it is a one lander here for Cedric, but he does have a creature. He does have and a uh, pair of path to exiles. Is this a good enough hand to keep here, Sean? I don't. I don't think so. You were, yeah. It looks like he agreed, and now this hand looks terrible too. Well, I don't know about terrible, but double rending volley and an Atarka's command. That's that doesn't have what it takes, right? What What did Patrick say? The deck dies to itself, and yeah, he did. Yeah. Is that uh, what I've seen here? Yeah, like these Rendy volleys are terrible in this spot, basically, because they're they're not going to be able to kill the Tarmogoyf. And he did mulligan that. Now I think he's found a keeper here with Bolt, Curd Ape, Nacodle, and Burrow's Charm with a land that can cast both the Curd Ape and the uh, the Nacodle here. So it looks like he's got a reasonable five card opener. What do you make of uh, of Patrick Dickmon's hand here on top? Uh, it's it's a solid hand. It has removal. It has Tarmogoyf, and uh, Dispel is is great against like Path to Exile or just uh, the Boros Charms later on in the game. Okay, is that a scavenging news on the side that I can just barely see there? When he plays this land, it'll it'll pop in for us. It might be a Misty Rain for us. I think it's a Misty. It's a Misty. Okay, so here we go. Now I think you know th there is the. Uh, the spell snare in hand there for Patrick Dickmon. It doesn't look like he's going to have an opportunity to use that here. As right. I think it's just going to be the Kurt Ape joining the team here. All right. So things moving ahead for Cedric Phillips. He gets to attack Patrick down to 18. And Patrick's going to take another damage off of his Scalding Tarn here. But now we're going to start seeing Tarmogoyfs hit the battlefield. We're going to see roasts start to happen. Right. Which actually made the path. A reasonable draw, even though he can't cast it now, because it it does have the potential to to get around uh, that Tarmogoyf. Okay, lo so it looks like Patrick's gonna keep this spell up when he plays it. Yeah, and also this, of course, makes the Tarmogoyf much bigger as he's just put a sorcery and a creature into the yard. Well, now there was a draw, a Goblin Guide off the top, and it was a Deceiver Exarch that was revealed. So. Cedric's going to have a chance to jot that down, and he, he'll know that that's potentially coming. But here we go. The brick wall has arrived for Patrick Dickmon. This is how he drew it up when we talked uh, in the previous round. He's at 12 life, and it looks like he's stabilized here, though. Yeah. And he gets to keep up counter magic, a deceiver exarch. And he's looking to be in a good position as uh, poor Cedric Phillips just can't find that second land after mulliganing to five. A tough position for him. And look at this. Patrick says, I'm rumbling. Tarmogoyf in. He can do that same trick with the Deceiver Exarch that he did in the in the previous game with the Bounding Crisis as well. Uh, and, yeah, and, and I mean, Patrick's in a great spot. But Cedric's on one land. You need, you need two lands with this deck. <laughs> yeah. Basically. Now, Cedric did use his land there, and he found one. Here's a Bloodstained Mire, so he will have two mana available this turn. He did bolt. Patrick Dickmon, who thought about using Dispel, but decided that there's bigger fish to fry than Lightning Bolt and uh, and did not fire it off. And I think we're going to see either Exarch or Electrolyze here. And Cedric is uh, wise to the Exarch. It, it would have been disastrous if he had have attacked and then ran into that Exarch and the Dispel. Yeah. And now I think we're going to see Boros Charm go, oh, maybe not. Ooh, another Tarmogoyf here. And Patrick Dickmon looks like he's pulling into the lead here as he just keeps beating down with his Tarmogoyf. He's got enough lands. He's got the defense. He's got a Bounding Crisis now to add to the board as well. And uh, 
Cedric Phillips mulligan and, and land problems are really plaguing him here as he just can't get the, the cards out of his hand fa- in, a, in, a, in a timely fashion here. Yeah, and there's there's not too much that can can really pull the the zoo deck out from under a deficit. I mean, it's it's supposed to be in the lead the entire game, and and it kind of just sputtered out after it got to Patrick down to twelve. Yeah, I think we're gonna see this get uh, spell snared. It looks like he he's got his he's got the dispel lined up, but it looks like a nice spell snare target here in Boros Charm. Yeah, yeah I think he's gonna go ahead and use that. He was probably expecting a path on on the Tarmoglyph. After the white mana. Yeah, sure. And now there is going to be a path. Now, is he going to protect his Tarmoglyph here? I would imagine so, since... He does uh, have lethal. Yeah. (laughs) And actually, he can go for lethal, too, right? He can just use one of his creatures proactively to lock down the ape and just kill him. Yep. And it's going to work. It's going to work, too. And that's going to do it. Wow, Patrick Dickmon gets by Cedric Phillips here, and he advances, remains undefeated in the modern Super League. You know, we bill him as a modern specialist, and uh, you can see why. He just comes in here and just rocks it, and uh, yeah. he has continued to do so uh, pretty he, consistently throughout the course of the, uh, of the event here, Sean. He is dismantling the field. Can someone stop this menace? <laughs> is there anyone out there? <laughs> Nobody so far. <laughs> I wonder if there's anybody else uh, around that could p- potentially do it. I, you know, maybe we'll try to find somebody. <laughs> Only if we're like a, a really grindy deck that could just grind through all these blue cards. <laughs> do you, Do you think you have the tools to to beat Patrick? I, I think Jund is favored against Tarmo Twin, but I mean, he's in his element, and I'm out of mine. But I got to make it through Cedric first. Right, so let's take a look here at how the bracket actually plays out now. So that means that, as you saw, Cedric Phillips, now he hadn't lost yet either. And so he, since he had a loss to give, remember this is a double elimination tournament, meaning that you get to keep playing until you lose twice. That's just how these tournaments work. And uh, that sets up our next matchup, which is going to be Cedric Phillips versus you, Sean McLaren. Now, uh, I want to get your thoughts on this matchup before I let you go here and as we get our, our players set up really quickly. Um, the Zoo deck, does it give you fits? Do you have the answers? How's it going to play out? Uh, I, I think Cedric's overall a little favored, but I mean, ho- hopefully what happened here happens again. He sort of mulligans a lot. <laughs> that, that, that's the game plan. <laughs> the old, uh, I hope my opponent mulligans a lot game plan. <laughs> yeah. It works. I like that. That yeah, you know, hours and hours of preparation went into uh, <laughs> into that. Okay, Sean, we're gonna let you go because you got to get ready to play. Uh, we're gonna take a quick break here at the Modern Super League, but we'll be back in just a few minutes with Cedric Phillips versus Sean McLaren. <laughs> 